Hi everyone, I am Prashana. I'm back here again on Modern Midlife First. So I know a lot of you like the i2 video and that inspired us to make another video today. We actually went uh, ahead and did some further testing on the i2. We also took the Polaroid Now Plus along with us to compare it. We went all the way to Gardens by the Bay. Uh, after doing the test, we had a few more uh, doubts about the lens. So we came back here at uh, Ian's place and we did some uh, tests in a very controlled environment as well. So why don't we see what we did at the Gardens by the Bay. Of course, the Polaroids we take today is actually being taken here at Gardens by the Bay. So actually the temperature should be well controlled and we're hoping that the images come out well exposed. We're going to use this uh, sharpness target uh, chart. I think most of you who were in the Facebook group for the Impossible Facebook group would have seen it. I've already taken a few images of it. Today we're going to take it on the Polaroid Now Plus. Then we're going to use the color rendition checker as well and see how the film renders the colors as well. How we're going to do the test is quite simple. I'm going to take a manual reading. I'm going to use an app on my phone. We're going to meter this subject. I know the Polaroid Now Plus has a propensity to overexpose a bit, so we'll use the manual reading and we're going to shoot it on a tripod in manual mode. Change. Okay. Now I'm going to just change cameras. I'm going to repeat the test again. So if you look at the weather today, it's actually super sunny. I'm actually just standing in the shade. So if you look at the external display as well, you can see it's a very, very hard to see. If it was a bit brighter, it'd be good. I'm trying to cover it with my hand so that you can see a bit more clearly. But in bright sunlight, it's almost uh, difficult to see which mode you're on, let alone the, the shutter and aperture speeds as well. Okay, so for fun, our camera guy got poisoned by instant film and he bought an Instax 300. So because of that, we have one here right now with us and we're going to do the sharpness and color rendition check with Instax film on an Instax 300. So here we go. Okay, I'm just going to cover it. The problem with Instax film is we don't know what settings were used because it's an automatic camera. But we'll see how the images turn out. I think in a bright day like today, it should turn out pretty well. Okay, so we know you have been having, all of you have been having some issues with the exposure light meter on the camera itself. So we're going to do an exposure compensation test. We're going to run through all the modes, all the major ones. So we're going to take a shot at minus 3, minus 2, 0, so forth. And between minus 1 and 0, we're going to take at each individual one third stop. We're going to use a fresh pack of film. Uh, it was produced in July this year. So if the film doesn't work too well, then uh, we can't blame anything else but the film. But I think it should work out pretty all right. I remember a screenshot. Okay, so for the test here, just to keep it standardized, we're going to put all the films on the floor here. It's all under the shade and the floor is actually very cold okay, if you, to the touch. So hopefully that keeps the Polaroid within the recommended uh, optimum temperature range and they will develop uh, as expected so we can analyze the exposure on the camera most uh, accurately, I guess. Yeah. We're going to do another test now, right now. We're going, to do, we're going to check the lens itself. We're going to check if there's any distortion, whether there's any pin cushion or barrel distortion. Uh, we put offset the camera 40 cm away from the grid lines here. I've also made it such that the, within the viewfinder, the grid lines encompass the, within the 0.5 meter viewfinder uh, guidelines. So let's see how much of the image is actually captured and if we see any distortion. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick uh, depth of field comparison. I think the previous one wasn't really uh, done uh, well enough. Uh, so let's do something that's a bit closer so you can see all the different aperture stops at a bit more greater detail. We can see the exact bokeh as well. We put a few objects along the whole wall here as well so you can see how much of each camera is captured at each uh, bokeh or aperture stop. So we're back already. Uh, these are the photos we took at Gardens by the Bay. Um, so we did a sharpness target test with a color test as well. Uh, we used three cameras actually. So we used the Fuji, uh, Fujifilm Instax 300. Okay, we used a Polaroid Now Plus and we used a Polaroid i2. So both cameras, they were shot at f32, one over 30th of a second. They look very, very similar. Uh, I would say for the Now Plus, we actually made it as ideal as possible. So just so we could make this comparison a little bit harder, 
So I will tell you the results of which film is which, maybe at the end, but maybe you want to take a quick look and guess which camera produced which image. Okay, so we did another sharpness comparison test, uh, but we, we did it while changing the exposure on the camera. We let the camera meter itself in aperture priority mode. We let the aperture stay at f32, and then we let the camera expose at minus two, then we let it expose at minus one, we let it expose at zero, plus one, and plus two. Uh, we noticed that of all the images that formed, we were actually quite happy between uh, zero and minus one. So we decided to test the two aperture stops, sorry, the two uh, exposure compensation stops in between. This scene was quite evenly lit, so I don't think it would have fooled the light meter. Uh, personally, I think Ian, I, Ian and I agree that if you expose within minus one to zero, you should get a pretty good shot as long as the scene is quite evenly lit, okay? But personally, if you ask me, my favorite would be either minus one-third or minus two-third stop, yeah? If you expose plus two or plus one, highlight details get blown out and you start losing a lot of details in the highlights. Uh, minus two, minus one and one-third, and minus one, you will start losing shadow detail. But I think at minus one third and minus two third, it's a safe exposure for an evenly lit scene, at least until maybe Polaroid recalibrates the light meter so that it reflects zero a bit more accurately. Okay, so what we did after that is we decided to test to see if there's any distortion on the lens of the camera. Actually, both are two shots, they are taken at the same uh, value. I'll just use this one here. So for this one, we use uh, grid lines to demark to just look through the viewfinder. I'll put a photo here to, to, see, to show you what we saw through the viewfinder. But if you look carefully at this image, you'll notice that there is some distortion on the periphery. There's a bit of per, uh, pin cushion distortion on the i2 uh, camera's lens. But I wouldn't say it's like too significant. And honestly, if you're so worried about uh, this kind of distortion, uh, maybe toy cameras are not the cameras for you. All right, so after that, we decided to do a bit more uh, intensive testing on the bokeh of the camera and see how the depth of field translates. Uh, all of these photos were taken within the aperture and shutter speed range, um, so that they're all, uh, there should be no uh, images that are actually overexposed or underexposed at the different aperture stops. The first image we took is, of course, we took the same um, scenery so you can compare the different uh, bokeh and depth of field. Uh, each camera was positioned about 30 cm from one another and we focused on the Polaroid SX70 camera here. Uh, all of these images were also taken at negative one-third a stop exposure compensation. So that's why the images look as such. Um, this, I think you can see clearly the bokeh renders beautifully. The, uh, the Polaroid Now Plus behind which si sits about 40 cm from the Polaroid SX70 is quite blur and not very clear. At F, 11, you start to see a bit more detail in the background. F16, I think you see a bit more detail, uh, a bit more than the F11. And at F22, you see uh, a bit more detail than that. It's only at about F32, um, then you start to see the Polaroid Now Plus camera coming into focus clearly. Uh, the color chart checker at the back is still not in focus, and that only comes into focus at F64. So this is actually our simple depth of field check. Um, once the photos fully develop, we notice something really strange about these images. Even though all of them were exposed correctly and at the same setting, what we noticed, it, uh, what we noticed was that at F8, the images appears a bit blown out, and at F64, the images actually appear a bit um, underexposed. So that made us wonder whether the camera is actually exposing correctly whether there is some reciprocity failure, whether the apertures are correct, whether the shutter speeds are correct, or what, what, what might be actually causing the differing exposure on these cameras. Because of that, we decided to do another test back here at Ian's home. So I'm gonna just run through that as well with you. And I think you can see how in a control environment, differing f-stop seems to actually affect the compensation required by this camera. So now we're gonna do a, a very uh, controlled testing. We have a controlled light and we have the, our sharpness target. So this is a Sony FX30 camera. We've done a bit of uh, spot metering. Uh, 
Uh, we've calibrated both cameras at f22, so they're as close as possible. The reason why we are calibrating everything at f22 is because we want to use that as our baseline. Then we will see whether higher or lower apertures actually affect the exposure modes. Uh, for the i2, we've calibrated it such that it matches the Sony FX30 as close as possible. We've used the grey cards, we've done a center, uh, sorry, a spot metering to make it as accurate as possible. And we will use the i2 to take photos at f8, 11, 16, 22, 32 and 64. And we'll see if there's any variance in this exposure at different aperture stops. Uh, the digital camera gave us f22 at 1 over 13. So we set the exposure compensation on the Polaroid camera such that it is f22 over 1 over 15, which was the closest we could get. And that was actually this image here. And this occurred at actually minus 2 third exposure compensation. And then we decided to just uh, open up the aperture as wide as we could and go down as far as we could. So actually, if you look carefully at this uh, grey chart here, you'll notice that compared to the shot taken at f22, this uh, grey chart here is actually overexposed. Um, the, the, there's more detail in the shadows here, and if you look at the 18% grey, they look very different to one another. And if you compare the f22 to the F64, you'll notice that the F64 is actually um, underexposed quite a fair bit. Uh, when I look at the calculated values on the camera, actually more or less all of them should be right. But for some reason, uh, larger apertures with faster shutter speeds still result in overexposed images, whereas uh, smaller apertures with uh, larger shutter speeds still results in darker images. So there's this variance in exposure based on what aperture setting you're using. And I suspect that this might actually be the reason why no one has any true consensus on how much to exposure compensate on this i2 camera. Either the camera is not exposing correctly or I suspect maybe the apertures at the extremes may not reflect truly of their correct value or something else might be off. Maybe the shutter speed isn't right, or perhaps even reciprocity of the film, but I don't think it could be reciprocity or shutter speed. Uh, reciprocity usually occurs when you take longer exposures, not uh, one over, I think the darker shot was just half a second exposure. Usually reciprocity comes into play when you're exposing at uh, maybe a few seconds or a few minutes actually. And if you think about shutter speed, the camera is actually, I believe, electronically timed. So that should be quite accurate as it gets. The only, uh, the only thing I can think of is perhaps the aperture values are not reflective of their true values. Either that or the ca camera is not calculating the exposure correctly. Okay, so basically the conclusion is that if you're shooting at wider apertures, the camera tends to overexpose. What you should do is even if you meter the scene correctly, should try to underexpose the image a little bit more. If you're at lower apertures, I know this film didn't turn out pretty well, but if you're at lower apertures, the camera will tend to underexpose. So try to overexpose more than what you normally would or what you metered the scene for, okay? And I suspect this is why that there is such uh, inconsistency in reports on how much to exposure compensate for the i2 now, and perhaps even maybe it's present in the um, Polaroid Now Plus, but we didn't do any testing in that. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick reveal. Uh, so these were the two images I asked you to compare. So this is the from an image from the i2. This is the Now Plus. I think in this case, both of them are actually very, very, very similar. So if you use the Now Plus in a very idealist, uh, ideal situation, it can actually rival that of the Polaroid uh, i2, okay? Uh, so thanks for joining us on this in-depth testing on the Polaroid i2. We probably might do a few more testing because I think the more testing we do, the more questions arise. If there's any specific test you would like us to carry out, please feel free to drop a comment below. If you like the video, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode of Modern Midlifers.